just right click there and you can see uh, then open with uh, can you check mm -hmm. uh, there's a ideally option no it's not there so uh, okay so if not uh, just cancel it just cancel it so open the ideally first open the ideally first All right then uh, using the ideally so please go to file open and open the file right file open and then open the file yeah that's how you have to like okay so this is uh to compare this is for three numbers is it uh i try to do three numbers the number one number two uh, you're checking first uh, number one greater than number two if number one is greater else number two is greater so yeah this is like uh this is uh for the two numbers then yeah for two numbers it will work for two inputs it will work but not for the three inputs mm. third input you are comparing that only with n2 now uh, so you are checking here right so that you have to do like this right so let me show I'm opening ideally so the first one you have done is correct so that means like when you have two inputs you can just compare that two numbers so let's say uh, number one is uh, int input. So let's enter number one. And similarly, you can get the second input. So after getting the uh, first input, second input two. So then uh, what you need to do is you have to compare them. So you have to check if uh, this n1 is greater than n2. If it is yes, you have to still like print, uh, let's say n1 uh, is the largest number, is the largest number. And uh, same time you can say n2 is the smallest number. n2 is the smallest number. So same time you can, tell that else uh, you have to tell so this n2 uh, is the largest number and n1 is the smallest so that is what you have to tell so let me run this so let's save as uh, nums uh, pi and when i run this uh, yeah so it will ask enter number one, let's say 45, 67. So it says 67 is the largest and 45 is the smallest. Let's set the numbers and give largest first. Uh, let's say 102 is largest than 34. You can see 132 uh, two is the largest and 34 is the smallest. Likewise, telling the largest and smallest. This, this is what the first question. So what you have done is correct. But what you have done is correct. But so you have to mention both largest and smallest, right? That is correct. So when there are three inputs, so how can we alter? So when there are three, that means number three also. So this is just copy down or to just take a screenshot for two input. So this is the answer. So let's try for three input one now. So let's add n3. So that is the third number. Int input, uh, enter number three. That is the third number. And so when, then you can compare N1 with N2. And then you can see N1 with N2 comparison. You can say N1 and N2, only N1 and still you cannot decide because the entry you have not compared. Or let's uh, do something like this. Uh, first of all, so let's, let's take a benchmark, something like this, max uh, number, so I'm telling that n1 and a mean number is uh, same n1 because if there is only one, only one option, that is the maximum and that is the minimum for sure. So if there is only one um, number, so that is the maximum and that is the minimum. But now you have to do the comparison. So when n2 comes, then you, are, you have to check this N2. If N2 is greater than the current maximum number, 
then you have to tell if yes the max number is equal to n2 the new comma new comma is n2 if it is bigger than the maximum number if it is bigger than the maximum number that is the maximum number then you can do the same comparison for entry if entry is bigger than the maximum number then uh, so the maximum number is entry similarly so this is one way right there are many other ways of doing the same this is only one way so similarly you can check if uh, n2 is smaller than the minimum number then the new minimum will be n2 you can check uh, the other one also if n3 is smaller than the minimum number so that will be the minimum number so finally you can print the answer without telling the n2 and n1 you can just tell Uh, mean number is the smallest one and uh, the max number is the largest one so this is one way of doing you can be a uh, look and you can keep placeholders so let's give a try now i think i need to input a tree and you can see 76 is the largest 34 is the smallest so let me run again one more time i'm giving same values but different so different values sorry now you can see 83 is the largest and 56 smallest so let's run it again one more time is the largest and 32 is the smallest so this is one way of doing but there are like so i said in the beginning also to solve one problem there can be many methods many alternative methods are there to compare and find the numbers there are many method but this is like uh, this is like uh, kind of so what we practically apply right so okay let's say uh, there are few students in the class and let me mark this three there are three students in the class one two and three and you are you are you are asked to find uh, the tallest guy you are asked to find you are asked to find the tallest guy if only this person is there you can tell okay the tallest is him only one person is there in the class you can see the tallest is him and also the shortest is also him if one person is there the shortest is also him the particular person is the shortest and the tallest a new comer new comer arrives so let's say secondly this person arrives secondly this person arrives and now you have to compare so is the new person taller than the current tallest no no need to change them is the new person shorter than the current shortest yes he short so let's change it now the shortest is this guy the new person the new shortest person is this guy now the third person comes now you are comparing is the newcomer is taller than the existing tallest person yes he is then the tallest is this and you have to remove this is the newcomer is shorter than the current shortest no finally you are printing the shortest is this and tallest is this so this is valid for any number of inputs so let's say you have 10 number of 10 inputs still this method is valid so that is why i like this method but there are ways there are other ways of doing the same so let me take a new file and tell me some other way you can compare like this multiple comparisons can be done without mentioning like this you can just compare whether n1 is greater than n2 and so you can compare whether in one greater than in two but if uh, if years you have to compare again inside this you have to compare whether in one is greater than in three as well 
if it is greater than both then you can say uh, n1 is the largest obviously n1 is the largest right because n1 is larger than n2 and it is larger than n3 so then n1 is the largest so else if not for surely you can say n1 is not larger than n2 and n1 is like if it is yes if n1 larger than n2 n1 is larger than n2 but n1 is not larger than n3 means n3 is the largest because uh, n1 the first one you are checking whether it is larger than n2 yes if yes you come inside then you are checking whether it is larger than n3 no then n3 is the largest And if it is not, if the first one is not, that else comes here. If n1 is not the largest number, then it should be n2. You are checking if n2 is larger than n3. If it is yes, definitely n2 is the largest number. n2 is the largest number because n2 is now n1 is larger than n2. No. If not n2 is the largest, then you are checking whether it is larger than n3 also. If it is larger than n3, larger than n3, then n2 is the largest. If not, n3 is the largest. So first you are checking n1. If it is larger than both numbers, n1 is the largest. So if not, the n3 comes here. You are checking whether n2 is the largest. If it is larger than both n2 and n3, then n2 is the largest. If not, the n3. So let's see. So this is another option. This is checking on the large, only the largest. The smallest also you can check the same way. Let me run this call and check whether is it giving output to the same problem. So let's run it. And you are, uh, let me give the same 34, 56, 76, and you can see 76 is the largest. Yes, it's finding. Let's give that second one, this 89, uh, 32, 22, and 89 is the largest. Yes, it finds. Let's give as the third option. Uh, then you can say, 89 uh, is given first, like this one. Okay, this one. 56, uh, 83, 76. And you can see 83 is the largest. Still, it discovers, right? So this method is also can be, but this is a bit ambiguous. This is a bit ambiguous. But this has like straightforward mechanism, but still both will find the solution. Right? Both will find the solution. So is there any problem so you, you cannot understand? So please tell me. Is it clear to you or ambiguous? So what do you think? Uh, it's it's clear. clear. Clear, okay. So which is easy, uh, this method or this method? This is first method. So let's say this is first method. This is second method, which is clear to you, more clear? Uh, second method. Second is clear. Yes. Second. Okay. But uh, you can see this is straightforward, right? So this has like uh, named min and max, and you are continue to change this number. So even forty inputs, this method is valid, right? Because you are using the same. So uh, this method is like unique. But this one you have to check repeatedly. So if there is another one, fourth one, so this will become complex, right? If there are four inputs, this will become complex. But still, this is simple. Okay. Anyway, so please try both. Please try both quickly. Let me know once you are done. Both the file try with different files, right? This I have saved as numstudy. This is, this I have saved numstudy. So be, be, please use both. Please use both because both are correct ways of doing the same. Already we have discussed about two control structures. Initially, I said when I start, there are three control structures. The first control structure is sequence. 
where the instructions will be executed one after another. So then the second one is selection. So we are here, this is sequence. The selection is where the instruction flow is based on a condition. So that is what we have just discussed, selection. So instructions are executed one after another, sequence that is very easy. That is what we did initial stage. Then the selection. So this if else comes in selection. So then the third category is, so we have to learn the third one, which is repetition. So there are three things. So sequence is where the instructions executed one after another. Selection is where the instruction flow is selected based on a condition. And the third one is repetition and repetition. So what will happen? The instruction flow is repeated based on a condition. Instruction flow is repeated based on a condition. Let's study the third one, repetition now. So how instruction flow is repeated. Right, to understand that, uh, let's do small question. Let's try to answer a small question. So then, so this is easy to understand, right? So let's say you are going to task to print. Uh, right? You are going to task to print uh, this even numbers from one to 10. So let's say you are given a task to print even numbers from one to 10. Actually, repetition will create circle or a cycle in the instruction flow. In the instruction flow, you can see a cycle. So let's see how this happens, right? Let's see, first it starts with number two. So let's say C, C is a variable here. It starts with number two. So then there's a check. In this check-in, in this condition, you are checking whether C is less than or equal to 10. So number two, is it less than 10? Less than or equal to 10? Less than. Yes. Number two is less than or equal to 10. If it is yes, the right side will be chosen. Right side will be chosen. So it will be printing Z. So what will be the output then? C value is 2. 2 less than 10. When printing C, what will be printed? What is the value? So understand it. So if C is initially 2. Okay, let me draw this somewhere. So let's say this box has value of C. C's value is stored here. So what is the value of C initially? Initially, value of C is two. two. Okay, two less than 10, yes. Display C. So what will be displayed? What will be printed? What is the value of C? Value of C two. is two. Yes, two will be displayed. Let me write the output here, right? Two will be displayed. Then C equals C plus two. So what is the current value now? C equals C plus two means C is now The current C is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, right? Yes. So new value of C will be 4. So you go back and check here this arrow, go back and check what? So this is what the what called the repetition. You go back and check whether C less than 4, C less than 10. Is C less than 10? C's value yes. is 4, 4 less than 10. Yes, then it comes the right side. And display C, what is what will be displayed? Two. Two or four? Four. Four. Yeah, four will be displayed. Then C equals C plus two. C equals C plus two. What is the current value of C now? Six. Six. So you go back and check whether six less than ten. Is it yes or no? Yes. Okay. Yes. Display C, C is 6, 6 will be displayed. C equals C plus 2, so this will be 8 now. You are checking back whether 8 less than 10, is it yes or no? 8 less than 10, is it yes or no? Yes. No. Yes. 8 less than 10, yes. 
you are displaying 8, add in 2, and now C is 10. 10 less than or equal to 10? Is it yes or no? Uh, yes. Yes. 10 is not less than, but it is equal, less than or equal. It is O, less than or equal. So it is equal. So display in 10. Add in 2. Now the value of C will be 12. 12, is it less than or equal to 10? No. No. Therefore, it will go here and stop the code. So what will be printed? It will be printing 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So these are the even numbers between 1 to 10. So to do that repeatedly, you have followed this cycle or this loop. You have repeatedly followed the right side cycle. So why it is a cycle? You can see the arrow heads point into a single direction. These arrow heads are pointing to a single direction. But in sequence, or sorry, but in selection, these arrow heads pointed to two directions, but they never merged together. See this? This is selection. In this uh, selection, you are checking whether three numbers are there. You are checking whether n1 greater than n2 and n1 greater than n3. If it is years, you are coming this side, but this side arrow will never go up. You cannot see it's going up back and form in a loop. You cannot see like this. It's branching, but it never loopy. That is selection. Here also, when this arrow, it seems like a cycle, but it's not forming a cycle, no way to go up. So it's not forming a cycle. This is also a branch. This is also another branch. It's not forming a cycle. Arrows are not pointing to the single direction. Here also, if it comes to this far, still it comes here, but no way to go up. So it is not a loop. So this is selection only. So can you distinguish that? Can you understand the difference? In selection, you don't have loops. You don't have way back. You don't have way to move back to the beginning. No circles, no cycles. So this is selection only. So what we have discussed, this is related to the previous question that we have discussed. You are given three numbers and asked to find the maximum. So no loops. But here in this example, here in this example, you can see it's looping. Looping means it's going back. You can see the arrows, please note these arrows going down, but again, going back to the previous location, that is a loop, that is repetition. Can you understand the difference between repetition and selection? Yes. yes. Okay. So shall we draw this, uh, shall we write down repetition quickly? So the heading is third one, repetition. Just write one, that is enough, because like, uh, so I'll be giving the note. So only write this part. There are more examples. For those, I'll give the link. I'll give the note. Just write this highlighted part, a repetition or iteration. That is what we are going to learn. Repetition or iteration. Then please write down this, the highlighted part. Then the example. Then draw the flowchart. So the coding part, how we can do the coding related to this. So there are three implementations. So as you can see here, these are pseudocodes. Pseudocodes means not actually running codes, but just sample codes, right? Sample codes means just to, just to explain what is happening there. So these are pseudocodes. So pseudocodes can be implemented in three ways. So one is you can just initialize, you can tell the value initially C is two, and then the condition while C less or this, uh, while this variable C, while C less than 10 do, what you need to do, display C, then add two to that. Display C, add two to that. So, and that is end while, because you can't write arrows there. So this is how you write the pseudocode, while and end by. 
So in between that, the repetitive, repetitive part. So this is where when you know the starting point and the condition and uh, the repetition, repetition steps. So then, uh, so if you know the starting, stopping and stepping all three, again, you can use something like this also. You can use for, for loop. So you can say for C equal two to 10, do this. And so go step two by two. That is another way of doing it. Or you can tell, so this is like, uh, so the first option, these two options, this is actually before you jump in into the river, you are checking whether you can swim. That means condition is pre-checked, pre-checked condition. You are checking the condition before you start. C equal to, you are checking whether C less than 10. But here, you do it first, you start doing this first, then you check it. The check-in happened. This is like jumping into the river and later check whether you can see. The faster one is this. You first jump into the river and check whether you can see. But this has a risk. This is less risk because you are checking before you jump into the river. But sometimes you need this. For an example, you are downloading a file. So when you want to download a file, you just download it. Later, you check whether you have enough space in your hard disk. So let's say you are downloading a movie. In the middle, it can give an error saying not enough space. Please clean some space to make room. Or please, give, please release some space because I need to continue the download. If you need to continue the download, this is data also. Check this way. So let's say you have internet connection with limited data connection. First, you start downloading. In the middle, it might tell your data limit is reached. So data limit has reached. Therefore, please reload, please top up data to download more. Likewise, you start first and then check. So that is there, especially in the internet environment. You start first and then check. So this repeat until loop is there. But uh, let's say when you're copying a file from one location to another location, you first check whether enough space is there. If enough space, you start copying the file. So check-in happens first. Sometimes check-in happens at the end. Sometimes check-in happens at the beginning. At the beginning. So these are the, these are the three ways of implementing that. So please write down that and show because this part is needed. And after that, we can do the exercises. Please write down this as well. So these are, there are three methods, all three methods, please write. So no need to implement using all three methods. If you just implement using one method is enough, but you need to know there are three methods. All right, let's uh, put the actual code in now. Let's start doing uh, the actual code in. Right, so let me move to the this one, and I'll take a new file. So I'm going to implement using all three methods. So let's do one by one. The first method, I need to print even numbers. Let's do the first method. I can say uh, C equal to, and while C less than or equal to 10, then the colon mark, then you can say print C, and then C equals C plus two. So this is the simplest way of implementing this. So let me save this as uh, even numbers dot py. So let me save run run module. And then you can see this use two to 10. So if you need this uh, in a horizontal way, so you are printing this like line by line. If you need this horizontal way, you can add small chord in there, comma and ending delimiter. You can tell it is just blank quotation. So that, oh, you can just put space, end with space. So then it's not going to the new line. Basically, so when you're not giving, it is new line. New line comes like this. When you end with new line, the same result, right? Same result means you are printing downwards, two to 10, same results. 
So if you erase this part still, the default will be the new line. New line means going to the new line. But if you just mention uh, end after comma end equal space, then it will not add the new line. Instead of that, it will add space. So what will happen then? So it will be printed from printed horizontally. So space will be the delimiter. Space will be the separator here. So you are printing horizontally. Whatever method you can do, either you can end ordinary way or without ending, you can go to the next line or you can just end with space. Or end with comma is also possible, right? Any delimiter is possible. So when you put comma, a comma will be applied. Uh, this here, you can see the commas will be applied. But I prefer the space. This is the first method of implementing. The second method of implementing is you can do for, for uh, let's say same C or any, any other variable you can do. Let's say in, in range, you have to tell the start in digit, end in digit, and step in digit. Then just print uh, n. Okay, let's print a new line actually print uh, two new lines. I'm going to print two new lines. Then print n in range 2 to 11 means 2 to 11 means 11. When you reach 11, it will stop. 2 to 11, go 2 by 2 and print in n and end in with space, right? So this is the certain method using for loop. And please note the first method is this and the second method is this. Because of two new lines, you can see spaces there. The third method, let's add two new lines again. And third method is you just start printing. You can say C equal to and uh, then while true. That means always you are doing this. While true, you are starting printing. You just print the Let's say see some other character k. You are printing the k, and after that you are adding uh, k equal k plus. So you are adding two, and you are checking if uh, if k is uh, greater than ten, you stop break. This is another way of doing the same. So let's say see. Okay, the third way. You are printing from K2 to K10, but when it is greater than, when K is greater than 10, it breaks, it stops. That is the third way. So shall we try these codes, please? I'll give like uh, you exercises after this, but first of all, please try all three methods, please try. And after that, I'll give you some exercise you can use preferred method either this one or this one or this one and do the remaining work but before that please try this okay. so will me and uh, both uh, tenoka so you have something to learn here so this in python so there's a very like special thing this space indicates this space in the beginning indicate this belongs to while loop this space indicate this belongs to the for loop. This space indicate this belongs to the while loop. But here, actually, to indicate that this is belong to if, you need space there. So that is the missing part. But if you put tab, yeah, just put a tab, then run it, and you can see that it will run smoothly, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Understood? Yes, I, I understand. Okay. Right. That is basically, uh, that is a rule in Python. Right. That is a rule in Python that space is required. Here. The space indicates this belongs to if. So always, when there is a leading space indicate, this leading space indicates belongs to, this leading space indicate this belongs to while, this leading space indicate this belongs to if. This leading spaces are so. Why we have put this print outside? Because we know we need to indicate that print belongs to 
nothing. Print is not belongs to the loop. If you indicate that inside, so let's say if you indicate that space inside, the two new lines will come under the while loop. This space will indicate this new, new line should come in the while loops when you run this. So see what's the result. There will be here two, then two new lines, four, then two new lines, six, then two new lines, eight, then two new lines, and ten, then two new lines comes because so because of this space, you have to make sure that this is not indented. This is not indented means not belongs to the loop. That is how you indicate the belongingness. That is specially there in Python, but when we are learning Java, so that part will not be there. So there's another method in Java. We are using curly braces to indicate the belongingness, but here we don't have braces. So we are using space to make it. Okay, so what are the other exercises? So we have a few more questions. Okay, please write down this as a question. Draw a flow chart and write through the code to print odd numbers from 1 to 10. So we have printed even numbers already. Now we have to try odd numbers from 1 to 10. Then square numbers from 1 to 100. And triangular numbers from 1 to 100. So this is a question. Draw flow charts, write pseudo codes to print odd numbers from 1 to 10. Square numbers from 1 to 100. And triangular numbers from 1 to 100. So how can we do this? You have to give a try. And you have to give a try. I'll give you three minutes. You can just give a try. But if you don't know what are these square numbers and triangular numbers, let me remind that. Uh, the square numbers is something like this. The number looks like square. So let's say this is a square number of two. It is 2 into 2. So you can see it looks square, right? So there are four asterisks. It looks square. So a square number of 3 is 3 into 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And another 3. 1, 2, 3. That is square number. So the first square number is 1. That has only 1. So the second square number is 2 into 2, which is Four. The third square number is 3 into 3, which is 9. Uh, the fourth square number. So, what is the fourth square number? Uh, 4 into 4 is so 4 into 4 is 16. It is 4 into 4. It is 16. So, that is the fourth. 1, 2, 3, 4. And 4 such. That is how the square numbers are generated, right? So likewise, you have to try 10 into 10, up to 10 into 10, that is 100. So that is how the square numbers. Goes. Then the triangular numbers, just half of that. Triangular number is half of that. So half of that means like, this is the first triangular number, it is one. The second triangular number will be one plus two, that is three. The third triangular number will be 1 plus 2 plus 3. That is number. So what is the third? So 1 plus 2. Yeah, that is 6. And the fourth triangular number, what is the fourth triangular number? Then? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So what is that? That is 10. 10. Yes, this is how the triangular numbers are generated. So in case if you don't know about this square numbers, triangular numbers, these are the patterns. The square numbers goes this, like square, the triangular numbers are moving like triangles. So shall we give a very quick try to implement this? So two minutes or three minutes, just take, so no need to draw the flow chart. Flow chart you can do as a homework, pseudocode you can write as a homework. Just try to create the Python code, please. So keep flowchart and pseudo code as homework. So you can do that and send me a WhatsApp. I'll indicate my WhatsApp number. It is a plus nine four 
that is Sri Lanka code and seven one nine double eight three zero zero seven three. So this is my WhatsApp. You can just send me to the WhatsApp, or you can send it to the email. That is your flow chart and pseudo codes. But the real code, can you try quickly, very quickly? But have you tried? So you got uh, odd numbers or not yet? Okay, so Dilmi, can you share? So Dilmi, can you share? So I'll, I'll help you, don't worry, I'll help you. Okay. So then, uh, yes, you are starting from, uh, yes, this is correct. You're starting from one, going two by two, just run it. Just run it. Yes, it's printing from one to nine. So that is correct. That is uh, odd numbers. So if you need square numbers, I think uh, like you have done the same, right? Tenuka, have you done the same or different? Any other method? Uh, no. No, right, okay. So this, this is like, uh, she has started from one, you can see. She has started from one, going two by two. So started from one, going two by two will give odd numbers. So how to print the square numbers there? Can you copy and paste this one more time? Can you copy and paste this entire thing? Just underneath that, yeah. So then you can start from one, go one by one. Can you go one by one? Just go one by one. And this time you can print C into C. C multiplied by C. So then what will happen? Just, yeah, there are, please edit that C into C. So that is how simple that is, right? That is what I said. So other thing that I'll keep that as a homework. So can you run it again? Now you can see when you run, if you indicate like, you can see it's printing the square numbers, right? One into one, two into two, uh, three into three, four into four, five into five, six into six, seven into seven, eight into eight, nine into nine, 10 into 10, it's 100. So only thing is like same loop you have to use, but you have to think little bit because you are going to generate some of the pattern. Okay, I'll keep the triangular number to you that you have one week of time to try. Just give a try. Okay, I hope you can understand this part, Tenuka. Oh, uh, yes, I can. Right. Just implement that. So this two is easy, but triangular number, little bit you have to think further from this but still the same you have you'll add only one more line to this can do that and i'll keep that to you do it as a homework please draw the flow charts in your book and also write the pseudo course then you can understand this very well actually that is the formal method first of all you have to draw the flow chart then write the pseudo code then come to the code but since these are small things we can do like this but the more formal way is first you have to draw the flow chart, then the pseudo code, then come to the code. Okay, then I'll stop from here. Good night. Have a nice day. Bye. Uh, goodbye. Bye.